That's a great horned owl. They live in the oak trees in my backyard and they talk to one another. I've never seen one, but I hear him. We're gonna be doing a great horned owl lesson today. I can't wait, it's gonna be fun. Welcome back. Now we're gonna get ready to make our beautiful great horned owl picture. Now for this lesson today, you have a lot of choices. You're going to need a piece of paper for drawing our owl, but there might be an idea that you might like, and that is if you would like to, you could take a pair of scissors and cut your owl out and glue him onto a piece of black paper. So if you have some black construction paper at your house, you might wanna bring that out as well. So you're gonna need one piece of paper for drawing your owl and another piece of paper to glue him on if you want to cut him out. Now, don't worry, if you don't wanna cut him out, you can just color the background with crayons or markers and make your own background sky. And he doesn't have to be out at night, maybe he's out in the daytime. I'm gonna let you decide. So these are the items you're going to need for today. You are going to need a piece of paper and maybe a black piece of paper too, if you would like to. You're also going to need a pencil, an eraser, a Sharpie marker, something to color with. I'm going to be using markers. You can also use crayons. I might even use both. I haven't decided yet. I think I'm going to use both. And if you're planning on cutting him out, you might need to get some scissors back here. Now, if you're planning on cutting him out, you'll probably want to also get a glue stick, but this is only if you're going to cut him out. So two of these things you may not need. All right, so pause the video and gather up your items and then meet me back here when you're ready. Welcome back. Now, if you got some black paper, you're going to put that off to the side. And you're gonna put your glue stick and your scissors off to the side. We're not gonna use that too much later. All you need right now, and move your markers off to the side and your crayons off to the side. All you need right now is your white piece of paper in front of you, your pencil and your marker, your magic glove, and that's it. So to begin with, we're going to look at the shape of our owl. When I look at this beautiful great horned owl, who, if we're really quiet, we might even hear him. He was just calling right now. I'm in my art studio in the backyard and I can hear him outside of my art studio now that the sun has gone down. So the first thing I want you to notice is the shape. He's like a big football shape, like a big oval. You see that? He has two round eyes. And this part of his feathers makes a letter of the alphabet. What letter do you see right there? I see the letter V. So when we draw our owl, he's going to be pretty easy because we're going to be creating all those shapes when we design our owl. Welcome back. All right. All you need right now in front of you is your paper, your pencil, your marker, and which is Mr. Sharpie and your eraser. Welcome back. All you need right now is your white piece of paper, your eraser, your pencil, and a Sharpie marker. We're going to begin by looking at the photograph of our beautiful great horned owl. And I want you to notice the shape of our owl. He is a big huge oval, like a squished circle. His eyes are perfect round circles and his beak kind of almost looks like a triangle, like an upside down triangle. You see that? He's going to be so fun to draw. Now when we draw him, Later, you could decide what color you want to color him. You can color him the colors of the great horned owl, or you could make him a different color or her. So let's begin by first using our pencil. And all we are gonna do right now is we're gonna put a dot in the middle of our paper. Now that dot's gonna help us 
draw the first part of our owl. And we're gonna start by making a big round U. And this is gonna be pretty big. I'm just gonna take my pencil and draw a big letter U. And we want it to be very wide and chubby. We don't want our owl to look too skinny. Now, once we do that, we're gonna come up here to the top and we're gonna round it like an egg. So now I've kind of made an oval. You see how I did that? I started with the letter U and then I rounded the top. Now the next part of our owl is these funny hairs sticking out of the top of his head. These aren't hair, this is actually feathers. He is called a great horned owl. And these, they kind of look like horns, but look, if you look close, they're not horns. They're made out of feathers. So we're going to be drawing a curved line up at the top and then some ziggity zaggity lines next to it to make the feathers. So this, to me, reminds me of cat ears. Do you have a pet cat at home? I have a pet cat, her name is Molly. And these triangle shapes at the top kind of remind me of Molly's ears. So I'm going to make a big fat triangle. And then later, we'll scribble scrabble over them to make them look more like feathers. Now we're going to go back to our owl picture. And now we're going to decide what kind of eyes we're going to give our owl. Should we make little eyes or big eyes? Look at how big our owl's eyes are. And they're a beautiful color, they're yellow. So we're gonna create some large eyes for our owl. And we're gonna make that cute little bead. So remember we have this little dot here, we don't need that anymore. So go ahead and erase your dot. And we're gonna start by finding the center, the middle, right up here where we wanna place our beak. Our beak is the nose on our bird. We're gonna go right here and we're gonna draw kind of like a rainbow shape like this, like a wide curve. And then we're gonna bring it down at the bottom and we're gonna form the letter V. All right, we just drew the beak for our owl. Now the next thing we're gonna draw are the eyes for our owl. So we're gonna start with two big round circles, one on this corner and one on this corner. So we're gonna bring the circle around all the way to the edge of our owl face. And then we're gonna match it on this side all the way around. Oh, and please don't worry if your circles aren't perfectly round. It doesn't matter. We're gonna change it in a little while and make it look more like a flower. Now inside those circles, we're gonna draw another big circle. This one's gonna go right inside. So it's gonna kind of look like we're making a donut. I don't think owls eat donuts. Now, once we've drawn those circles, that part of the owl's eye, we're gonna be coloring yellow. Now, after we've colored this yellow, we're gonna color the inside another circle and we're gonna make a black pupil, but we're gonna do that later. We don't need to work on that right now. All right, so we have our big circles for the eye and this part we're gonna change and we're gonna make it look more kind of fuzzy, like feathers. We've got our beak, we've got our eyes, we've got our tufts of feathers up here. Now, I know they look like ears, but did you know that a great horned owl does not have ears right here? I thought these were ears. His ears are hidden right here on the side of his head. They're a tiny little hole hidden underneath the feathers. This feathers right here, he can lift up high like this, like horns, or he can tuck them back behind his head. If he wants to look like he is kind of more scary, he can lift them up like this. To, if there's a predator that's near him, he can lift them up like that. And that will scare away somebody that might be like maybe another animal that might want to eat him. 
All right, let's draw our wings for our beautiful owl. And so what we're going to do right here, we're just gonna draw a half of a curve on this side and a half of a curve on that side. And then we're gonna match it on the other side. So we're just gonna draw it around like this. We're kind of drawing the shape of a leaf. And since owls love to hide in the oak trees near my house, that is a perfect thing to draw, leaves. Owls make their nests up in the branches and they gather leaves and twigs and they build big, large nests that they can have their young. Now, right here in the middle, I want you to notice that the feathers look kind of like small letter U's. Do you see that? So later we're gonna take our marker and we're gonna make some letter use. We don't need to do that right now. We'll do that a little bit later. Now we're gonna close the head and the chest part off by drawing a, a smile right here on this side of the face all the way across to the other side of the face. And then this part will be his chest and this part is his wing. And then we're gonna have a little part right down here would be his tummy. So I'm just gonna draw a half of a smile from side to side for his tummy. All right, we are ready to get our marker now. So I'm gonna put my pencil down. I'm gonna get my magic rub eraser or the end of my pencil. And I'm just gonna erase a part of his body out of the wing. See this little part right here? I don't need that anymore. There we go. All right, go ahead and put your eraser away and we're gonna get our Sharpie marker out. Make sure you're using a Mr. Sharpie because this won't smear later when we use the other kind of markers. So the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna trace the top of the tufts of feathers, the part that makes it look like a horn for a great horned owl. Then we're gonna trace the top of his head And then we're gonna not draw a straight line down. Instead, we're gonna draw a ziggity zaggity line across that line. So see how I just kind of scribble scrabble my marker? Now I'm gonna draw the side of my owl's head and the side of my owl's head. And then I'm gonna trace the side of his wing and the side of his wing. And then I'm gonna trace the other side of his wing, the other side of his wing. I'm gonna trace all the way around the bottom and then around his tummy. And then when I get ready to do his head right here, this part at the, where his bottom of his head is, you can do a smooth line like this, or you can make a bumpy line. And I'm gonna go right up here and I'm gonna trace the letter V for his beak and the top of the V for the top of his beak kind of looks like a slice of pizza. Then I'm gonna trace around the small circle and around the small circle here. And inside that small circle, I'm gonna trace another circle and another circle. I'm gonna color that circle in black. And you want to make that circle big, almost as big as the circle around it. Now this circle, you can make a round circle or you can make it look fluffy like feathers by making a wibbly wobbly line around the edge. Doesn't look like a donut anymore. All right, we are almost done. Right here across his chest, if you remember, I was showing you that the feathers in the center of his chest 
they look like the letter U. So I think that would be kind of easy to make some U's, or you can make some scribbles across. And then we're going to take our marker and we're going to close it up. And we're going to get out either crayons or water markers, water based markers like these for coloring. Now, I have the colors that match our great horned owl. But if you would rather color your owl pink or purple or blue or green or rainbow, you can choose any color you like. Now I'm going to begin by using crayons first. And I'm going to take my crayon and I'm going to color this circle right next to the black pupil with my crayon. I can control my crayon pretty good right around that eye. If you don't have crayons, you could also use your yellow marker there. You want to make sure his eyes are yellow. Next, you can decide if you want his beak to be yellow or if you want his beak to be orange. Or you could do his beak black. It's up to you. Or purple or green. And then I'm going to put my yellow crayon back in my cup. Now I'm going to look for my brown crayon. So I'm going to take my brown crayon. I'm going to color very softly. Look what it's doing. I'm barely touching my brown crayon around the feathers right here. Now you could color this a soft pink, a soft light blue. We just want it a light color. We don't want it really dark. So I'm just taking my brown and barely, barely touching it so it looks like the soft tan feathers around his yellow eyes. See that? Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brown crayon and I'm going to scribble a few stripes in his wings. I'm going to also take my brown crayon and scribble a little bit of brown on the top of his head and maybe a little bit in between his eyes, just a little darker. Now, if you are finished using your crayons and you want to experiment with the markers, you can do that too. Now, I'm going to be using the colors that I see when I look at my great horned owl. I see yellow, I see orange, I see some brown, I see some black. So these colors I can use now when I'm drawing my owl. So the first color I'm going to start with is the lightest color. So I'm going to add a little scribble scrabble of yellow. And then I'm going to be mixing the orange and the brown over it. I'm going to put a little yellow here on his face. I'm going to be putting a little yellow across his chest maybe in a few little sections. And maybe just a little bit down here, I'm gonna mix my colors together. When I'm finished with my yellow, oops, did you notice I did not put the cap back on my yellow? Look at, see how it's not all the way down? I wanna make sure it snaps tight. That way they don't dry out. Now I'm gonna take my orange crayon and I, I mean marker, I'm gonna decide where I wanna put some orange. Now you might be using completely different colors than me and that is just fine. So I think I might be coloring the top of his head orange. I see quite a bit of orange in the picture of the owl. Do you see the orange in his feathers up the top of his head? Now when I'm done, using one color. I always want to snap the lid back on my markers. And that way my markers don't dry out the next time I want to use them. If you do have a marker that's really dry, you can ask your mom to, or dad to take it and dip it into a cup of water 
for just a few seconds and then put the cap back on it and then store it just like this, pointing down and just leave it off to the side in another cup or maybe leaning against something. And when you come back, the marker will be able to work again. Sometimes the ink gets a little dried out and you can just add a tiny bit of water to it and it will help the marker wake up again. Now, when you're done coloring with your marker orange, I want you to find a spot somewhere on the chest to color the same color. Or if you're using pink or blue or purple, find a place on the chest where you can copy that color and use it again. So kind of like we're making a little pattern. I think I might add a little bit over the crayon too. So when I color with my marker over the crayon, the color is a little lighter. Do you see that? See how it's not as bright? I like that. When you're all finished with your orange, then I'm gonna move on to the brown crayon. So I'm not gonna color this area up here. I wanna keep that light, but I am gonna use that color in his wings. I'm gonna outline his wings a little bit, and then I'm gonna scribble scrub a little brown in parts of his wings. We are almost done drawing our beautiful great horned owl. When we're all finished drawing our owls, then you're gonna decide what you wanna do for the background. There's a lot of things you can do. One of the ideas could be that you draw a picture. Where is the owl sitting? Is the owl sitting in a tree? Is he sitting on a branch? Is he sitting up on the roof of your house? Is he sitting in the park, maybe on a rock? Is he sitting up in the mountain? And then once you decide what you're going to draw in the background, you can go ahead and color that. Now, another idea was what I showed you earlier. And that is if you want to cut your owl out, then you can place your owl on a piece of black paper. So I wanna show you how I did that. So what I did was I took a pair of scissors and I carefully cut my owl out. And when I was done cutting him out, I placed him on a piece of black paper. And you might notice these white stars and the moon here. And the way I did that was I used a crayon and I just used a white crayon and I made little stars by just pressing down very gently so I don't break my crayon and I'm just leaving some little star dots like that. To make the moon, I just swirled my crayon around in a circle and filled it all the way in with white. And then I colored a little bit of yellow over the white to make the moon kind of glow. And then if you do want to cut out your owl, you can just take a little bit of glue or glue stick and place him wherever you would like him to be on your background. Now, if you don't want to do that, you could draw a branch underneath your owl too, and you can draw right on the white paper. So maybe you want to draw a branch. If you want to draw a branch, you could just go like this and draw a line across the bottom and another line underneath. You could add a little skinny branch coming up. Make sure it comes to a point. And make a little tiny branch off to the side like this. You could draw some leaves on the branch if you'd like to. You could color your sky blue if you want your owl out in the daytime. Or another trick that you can do is you can take a crayon that does not have any paper on it, a broken crayon, and you can use the side of it to make a dark sky. So if you want to color a dark sky, you can take your crayon and make sure you peel the wrapper off and you can just pull it across your paper like this. And when I'm finished, I can go right over the branch, it's okay. Turn it 
turn my paper around to this side. And then it's gonna look like she's getting ready to go out and fly in the nighttime. You know, owls can see at night. We can't see at night, but owls can. They have a wonderful sense of direction. They use their ears, which we can't see. Remember the ears are on the side of their head. They use their ears and they can hear around them. They know where their food is by listening with their ears. They also can sense around them. They have good vision, but they even have better hearing. Well, I hope you had fun today doing our art lesson. I can't wait to see what you decided to do with your owl picture. Did you decide to cut your owl out and glue it to another piece of paper? Or did you decide to color your background like this? Why don't you send me a picture of your drawing that you did? You can send me a picture of your artwork to rtorres at lcusd.net. I would love to see your work. If you send me a picture of your artwork, I promise to write you back. Hope you had a wonderful day and I hope you had fun with our art lesson today. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.